Okay, let's get into this and let's see how quickly I can crash the game. Actually, let's restart and have a nice fresh, fresh level to play. Alright, so far so good. So it's probably pretty obvious, uh, straight away there's a few differences in Notre Dame, notably the weapons and the characters you just saw. So, we're sort of getting into a bit of an exciting era for Time Splitters modding at the moment, where uh, sort of doing a few more slightly bigger changes is now sort of more possible. but also quite a lot of extra work. So you can see another weapon in this level, which normally isn't here, we've got the laser gun. Actually going on to other additions. So normally this is actually a shotgun as well, so... It's been replaced with a sci-fi handgun. Hello, Ultra. Now, I've not really worked out the, um... Well, I have. I've just been lazy with implementing it. But you can see the ammo dropped on this laser gun is pitiful, so... Things like that I need to, uh... Learn a little bit more. So, one thing I really like, actually, when you add... Different characters to, um... Levels they're not meant to be in... So normally the zombie would spawn in there and have the blue rotating effect, but with it being a robot, it actually does the robot teleport, which is quite cool. Now why you're not meant to be dropping that? So you're not meant to be in this level anymore, but we'll pretend you don't exist. So normally that would be a shotgun as well, we've changed that. Actually we can have a peek into the level. So the whole idea of this stream is I want to just do a bit of a, not a show off, I've just spent quite a long time uh, changing the setup on this level, as well as actually changing the files for it. So seeing as I've spent all day actually setting it up, I thought I'd actually play it and actually have people watch it. But on the surface level, it's literally just a character and weapon swap. Oh. So, a few interesting things actually, when it comes to the bots here. So normally these will be crypt zombies and sewer zombies. And they're actually programmed, so there's a, um, a key or a flag or whatever you would call it. Um, that actually sets them on fire. Now, chassis bots can actually be set on fire. Sentry bots can't. Um, so I've actually removed that uh, so they don't set on fire. Just because I don't think it makes sense for robots. And do I actually get any ammo for this? God, I, not a lot. So weapons that actually have a bar that fills up, getting the right amount of ammo to drop can be a bit tricky. So, now I did actually replace the Maidens of Gressel, but the game didn't like that at all, so... Oh, a healthy amount of ammo they've left me. Another thing as well, which um, this level does lack, all the sound effects for these guns as well, they don't exist, so... All the charging sounds and everything like that, they're not in this level, so you've got to add them in. You've got to add them to the index, and there's a special file which actually controls uh, what sound is where. That's interesting, you looked like you were holding a gun you didn't have.
So we're doing, um, because I've been doing this for a little bit now, it, it's real straightforward to, um, to start doing these types of mods. But it's just so time consuming to make sure you've got everything correct. And you do one thing wrong, and you have a, a, a game that crashes. Come back to you. But when you get it right, it is, it's good fun. Changes the feel of the game, definitely. Now, see pretty obviously I've changed the changeling. To, so this is actually the story mode sentry bot, a pretty big unit. So in arcade, you actually get the smaller version of this, just to probably make arcade a bit less uh, chaotic. Now, I think there's some weird tags on this thing, so when I actually release it... So, if normally, if these are attacking me, they'll do the slow march as if they're in Robot Factory, but I think this character has a tag which makes it do special animations. So, is it gonna... It should, might even do the zombie animations, which isn't... No, it's doing the story mode animation. Jesus. Holy crap. Okay. God, that's a strong thing. Did I pick armor up? Did I leave the armor in? So, for some reason, I've had that sentry bot randomly do zombie animations, which is kind of not normal. Okay, are you following me down here or not? But they're so tough. They're as tough as they are in Robot Factory. Maybe a bit more. Because I know Robot Factory has a few special sort of keys and flags that modify health. Now, am I going to come around this corner and get pasted? No. Oh. Yeah, probably. Oh, let's do a little bit of cheating. I'm using the weapon that I'm not meant to use, but no, who cares? Jeez, he was a strong one. Hello, Spoyer. Thanks for joining in. So, as I've said before, this is a bit of a, it's more of a test stream, it's, um, I've been messing around with this for quite a lot of the day. So I might as well try and show off uh, how it is. Not perfect, because it's, it's still very early days. But still good fun, apart from when you get your ass kicked by the sentry bot there. Now what worries me about that is I've put a lot of these sentry bots in here, so... Uh... I mean, I could cheat, but... Are you a sentry bot or a, a chassis bot? So another thing actually, which um, I've had to do... What are you going to do? Are you going to work or not? Are you dead? So another thing I've had to do is you might remember a lot of the enemies in this game, the zombies at least, they're sitting down or they're stationary. So there is something that controls if an AI is sitting down or uh, doing a certain animation. Uh, if the robots are sitting down, it completely glitches the game out. And I might, I might actually be able to demonstrate that later. So I've had to change them to either be uh, standing or to teleport in or to basically hunt the player as soon as they come into existence. Okay. Hello, Jude. Thank you for joining in. I'm pretty worried about this because the amount of sentry bots I've put in this section is probably... Uh, I think I saw one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be pretty hard times. And I gave... And I gave them miniguns. For the sake of demonstration, I'm actually going to uh, put invincibility on. Because it's more about showing things off than it is being a pro player. So another weapon we've put into this level is the minigun. And I thought the sentry bot <laughs> wielding a minigun would be pretty terrifying. I'll 
take that, thank you. God, the ammo they're giving is so low. We can change that though. Actually, I think I put a minigun in here. I did, and I think I made it give me normal ammo. Yeah, full ammo. Look at this, the action sentry bot. I'm surprised these animations actually work. Uh, normally any animation which it's not meant to do, it uh, completely glitches out. But I'm glad that works. Even though it doesn't make any sense. But, um... Yeah, so I've added robots into this. I mean, I wanted to, um... Kind of do the complete opposite of what this level is about. So, um... As I'm just sort of getting to grips of adding different content into different levels and actually coding it up so the AI uses it and uh, all the sounds work and models work and textures work, it's, uh... I thought I'd share some of the fun, but it, it just takes so long to get it actually working. Um, hello. Because it's not just a, really a case of sort of dragging files in, you've got to... You know, you're not actually holding your weapon. I'll have to investigate you. Yeah, but you've got to sort of bear in mind a lot of pickups in the level need changing. What the AI weapon is, you've got to change that, the ammo they drop. really like them with the minigun, it is pretty scary. I mean, you can change... Well, there's a good example coming up for bosses, actually. Um, so, I mean, you can change the bosses. They're essentially just bots. But, um... Hang on, let's pop down here quickly. But, I mean, the portal demon, which you see in this level, is actually a separate bot, which is stupidly big. So if you change the, um, the boss, which appears in a minute or two... Actually, I've got an idea. Let's do the old infinite ammo trick. So if you change the portal demon, you end up with a tiny sort of enemy marching down the corridor. So this is now the new hunchback. You're not holding your weapon though, but you are using it. That's quite interesting. So I did actually change a few things here. So when these bots spawn... Hello, Sandwave. So when these bots spawn in, there's actually um, a set amount of lives and a set amount of how many can be there at once, so I've sort of fiddled around with that. But this is actually the first proper playtest of this level, so... I don't know why you can't see the weapon, actually, that's quite interesting. The good old uh, voice of R109. I think I said R108 before, actually. Now, there's no weapons hiding around here, is there, or anything? Nah. Something should spawn in a minute. Yeah, well, when the, uh, when the hunchback actually holds it... Um, he's holding, like, just a normal weapon that you are, so I don't really know why. Because, like, look here. So, like, he's not holding his weapon. But I swear at the start they were. Uh, this is a custom weapon set. So, if you want to know the, the process of adding a weapon into the game, or a weapon into another level... Uh, there's normally three models for a weapon, so the one you see here, uh, the one you see here, and then the one that the character, the enemies themselves actually hold. So you add those three models into the, the other level, 
but then you've actually got to look inside the model data itself and determine which texture files it needs. Now the texture files aren't named, they're literally just numbers. Um, so then you've got to find all the texture files, pop them in, index all of them as well and hope that they actually work. So uh, it's a pretty slow process. And then to actually get these weapons to appear in the level, you do need to change the, uh, like the actual weapon set for this story level. Now, I had a lot of difficulty. If you try changing the shotgun that you normally start with, it does not like it. It would crash every single time. So, so many things to iron out and play around with. But it's good fun. It's just not fun when it crashes and you've spent five hours. See, they're holding the sci-fi handgun, which is... Uh, And consider it, and like the uh, sentry gun was holding the sentry gun, the sentry bot was holding the minigun. God, that was quick. I think this should follow a pretty... No, I was going to do that, actually. Um, I kind of got impatient and just decided to keep it as it was, especially because there's voice lines and things like that. But I could definitely change it to Machinist. Now, are they holding the gun or not? I'm going to assume they're not. So the uh, plasma auto rifle seems to have a few issues. Look into that. Now, I know the chassis bot was holding laser gun just fine before, so... Well, that was quite quick. So what I can do is let's quit and probably crash the entire game. So I mentioned a bit earlier on, that if you try to sort of give, say, the robot zombie animations, they don't like it. Let's see if I can show an example of that. So, now I've got to hope to get this right, because I've not done this a lot. I think if I change the AI behavior, um, I'm able to add as many weapons as I want to levels. I've got to think about that. Because... Can you change the player model? Yeah, you should be able to change the main character. Uh, in terms of adding weapons, most levels have around, what, six to seven max? Like, you think of Siberia, that's got quite a lot of weapons in it. Um, each weapon set is assigned to a level. But how would you change it? You might be able to change where it points, but I can't, like, make a new list with 2,000 weapons in it, because... Uh, I, I, you have to edit an existing list. Now, I might be able to make Notre Dame point to a bigger list with, say, seven, eight weapons and then change them. But, um... Now, I've quickly... Now, I might have actually messed this up. But I've changed one of the robots... To be sitting down or lying down like a sewer zombie would, and you'll kind of see the graphical issues that you get. Never mind, I've messed it up. Let's see how I've messed it up, though. 
Um, how do the other zombies actually sit? Ah, that's what I've done wrong. Okay, well that's easily fixable. So you can see they're holding their weapons just fine. So one of them will, should be sitting down, and you'll see what happens when a, like a chassis bot tries to sit down. No? How weird, I wonder what's going on here. So I've changed all the settings, that's fine. Maybe they're just not gonna do it. Because they know I'm on stream. Literally just gonna copy code over from uh, another enemy. Oh, I've actually still messed it up. Doesn't want to do it today. How weird. Can't really force it to do it if it doesn't want to, I guess. No, actually, I reckon I'm still doing it wrong. Let's change that entirely. Let's do a hard reset. Um, well, actually, I can make all three of them sit down, and you'll see what happens. I think they instantly teleport up. We'll find out. We might as well do some testing whilst we're, we're here. So, enjoy. So this is an example of like an animation just sort of glitching out. Uh, that's what happens when a robot tries to sit. But if you, you notice, once they get up, I reckon the reason this one's actually glitching is it's not meant to be uh, sitting down at all. Like normally that one is actually already up and ready to get you. So if we pop him back to how he should be, Pop all the other ones down to default zombie behavior. So there's a lot of experimentation, like, you know, when you're messing with animations and AI and things like that. You're still not happy, are you? So I've made these ones, uh, you're still normal, but... Now whilst we're here, let's check if the uh, chassis bot holds the laser gun okay. Yeah, it does. So the plasma rotor rifle is the issue. Well, the reason I put the robots in is I thought, what's the least fitting thing to put in here? So, uh, that's why I've done it. Let's change these back to four. Some fun things we can actually do. Let's borrow a bit of the uh, code from another one. I reckon this one will be the ticket. We change one of the digits on their spawn. Yeah, you can check. You can take the weapons off them. If you give a sewer zombie a weapon, I believe it does the the spit attack. Oh, there's a few weird things with zombies and weapons. Um, but yeah, I can take the weapons off them. 
and they'll just sort of run up to you and try and punch you, which I can demonstrate in a second, actually. So let's just, I'll show you another tweak of the behavior. So you can actually change spawn settings to, uh, will it actually work for these ones, though? Let's do something a bit stupid. Okay, hello. What are we looking for? Looking for you. Ah, additional settings, that's what we want. Yeah, story bot sets are, um... Is this Dolphin or is this PS2 that you're trying to do it on? Oh yeah, <laughs> helps if I, uh, full screen, doesn't it? Yeah, so the pro the reason you can't change bot sets on, um, I mean, I can't 100% guarantee it for Dolphin, but I'm pretty sure it'd be very similar. Uh, so each level, so Siberia, Notre Dame, Chicago, um, it's basically only going to load the bots it needs. So it doesn't load from like a general pool. Um, so this level only has your sewer zombie, your crypt zombie, your portal demon, maidens, changelings. It doesn't have access to any other file. So when you try and load another bot in, it tries to load models, files, and textures that it actually can't get to, and then it crashes the game. So in order to actually make it be able to load them, you have to manually sort of take the game apart, put the files in you need, index the files, put the game back together, then alter the bot sets to load them. And even then you get stupid issues. But yeah, one of the things you can do actually, one of the spawn settings is you can change... Uh, and AI is actually going to be on fire. It's the same for weapons when it comes to trying to change them in story mode. So most levels, they just have basically the bare minimum of what they need. Sort of the my theory was that it's to sort of cut down loading times and uh, try and optimize the game a little bit. So it's not loading the hundred and whatever characters and thirty plus weapons at once. Same for objects as well, props. So for example, this door is a prop. Uh, it will only be found in this file, or this level, I should say. So, but we're um, we're definitely getting a lot better when it comes to time splitters modern. That's for sure. Now, let's actually change this back to how I wanted it to be. So, should be getting a bit more normal. You're still on fire, are you? Ah, uh, getting... I mean, the dream for me would be to put custom models in the game. Uh, to be fair, we're not really that far away. The textures are Texture files, at least for the PS2, they're, they're sorted out. Um, if I'm right, hasn't Time Splitters Rewind taken the models out of these games and been able to turn them into, say, 3DS Max models? So I don't see why you couldn't put a 3D model, convert it into the Time Splitters format, and uh, code it in. So it's just, I don't think it will be soon. I think we're getting to a stage where we can do lots of things. Um, but doing them quickly is still going to take a fair while.
but custom levels would be the dream. I just want to put some like time splitters one content in the game. Nearly all the sounds from Time Splitters 1 are in this game. Now I'm going to have to have a look as to why the Plasma Auto Rifle isn't actually showing for them. I mean, at least for some of the most basic editing, like when it comes to weapon stats, um, level setups, things like that. I am working on something to try and make it a bit easier. It's not very elegant, though. No. I've got a few people testing it for me at the moment, actually, which is helpful. One thing I've noticed, actually, if you do get set on fire on this level, the rain will put you out. As I set the, um... Oh yeah, you're not meant to be here. Actually, let's fix that, because uh, I would like this to be a better... It's good practice. So let's give you the plasma. Let's try giving you a little bit more ammo. Oh yeah, why are you still on fire? Let's, uh, let's fix that. The other thing I guess as well, when it comes to modding, um, so there's already, someone's already made, I've not used it myself, but from what I've heard it's very good. Someone's already made an ISO patcher, so you can sort of patch um, parts of the game. But it's not, I don't believe it's flexible to the point where you can add content. And Because my issue is if I make a cool wacky mod or something and I want people to say speed run it or make a challenge thing or something. Because I've actually been working on a, a new arcade league with new pictures, completely new setups, new challenges, you know, new requirements um, to replace the existing one. Think of it as like an expansion pack, but then how do I distribute it without essentially giving people an ISO of the game? Um, so, but it would be really good, to, I can at least share how to do some of these sort of silly changes and stuff for the game, but sharing the files is kind of difficult at this stage. Now, you shouldn't have a shotgun anymore. You have the invisible gun. Oh, you could give me less ammo this time. So stingy with the ammo. I tweak it to zero. See if it gives me a bit more ammo now. I guess on the flip side, it would be quite fun to do a sort of haunted robot factory and add all the zombies into it. This. Actually, that's a bit more like it. Right, now are you going to give me any more ammo? You give me full ammo. See, that's, that's too much. But I appreciate it.
So they're going to give me basically nothing. Is that right? No, a tiny, tiny bit. Actually, I know I should. Uh, I know it won't work, but I did put the barrel robot in this level, so I should probably. I could try it. I just know what will happen. Um, I've tried using the barrel robot in Map Maker before, and it just walks in a straight line until it goes through a wall. But maybe we can try it in the, this level and see what happens. Virus and arcade custom stuff. Can you do it with story AI? Uh, what do you mean by like custom stuff or virus? Hang on. Oh, um, do you mean playing like virus mode on this level? Uh, when normally you can't. Yeah, um, that's something else I'll be looking into. So, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. Weirdly, um, so the game's split into two halves, essentially. You've got story mode and arcade. When the game's in arcade mode, it actually looks in a specific folder that's called arcade, and that's where all the levels are loaded and things like that. So in the arcade folder, most of the story levels aren't there, so if you try to force it to load, um, you know, like Return to Planet X or something, it will actually try to load something that doesn't exist, and it crashes. Um, when I managed to get it to load, say, Return to Planet X, and I think I got Space Station to work as well, a few other story levels, I essentially ported the story files into the arcade, and um, just tried to see if it would work, which they sort of did, but the scripting and the level setup wasn't there for it, so that's why it was a bit glitchy and not too good. Um, with the Siberia video I did when I added bag tag, I've sort of started to understand how to do level setups. So I can add the player spawn points, the bag bases, uh, the weapon drops, zones, but it's a case of... It's just a long process because you're essentially typing it all out. I don't have an editor where I can see exactly where things are and put it in. Now, but weirdly, Notre Dame, Siberia, and Wild West already existed in the arcade folder with a little bit of, sort of, not scripting, but a real basic setup. So it's nearly like they intended it, or at least maybe like a Challenger Arcade League to be set on those levels. Um, but yeah, it should be possible to, to even script up story mode levels port them into arcade, you know, add zones and things like that. I don't think adding assault would be something I could do. Well, actually, let's just get rid of him. There we go. No. Don't shoot her, shoot me. The good thing is, a lot of the game modes, such as, say you've got Deathmatch, Team Deathmatch, what else have you got? Like Shrink, Vampire, and Thief, and things like that, they nearly all run on the framework of Deathmatch. So if you can get Deathmatch working, you've got nearly half the game in. Virus and Flame Tag will nearly work guaranteed on any level, because they don't really require any setup. They don't even follow spawn locations, they just randomly drop you in the map. Um, so the only modes which are kind of tricky to get working in, say, custom levels is... Hello. Anything which requires, like, bag tags and things like that. Bag tags is probably the easiest one to do. But these levels won't have areas to pick up weapons or armor or anything like that. You have to manually script it in and save it, test it. Now, this is where things get really hard. But it's all possible. It's just time. 
I think it's I think it's the end. Um, nah, story AI. Um, the game sort of has a. Ooh, the game has a few. Um, how do I put it? It has two ways of working, like a story mode, logic, and um, normal AI. Are you all dead? You are. And now I'm about to be dead. So, special... Say, like, you see the sentry bots doing his slow walking animation and everything like that. That's part of story mode logic. It, it doesn't happen in um, arcade. It's nearly like the game runs on a... It's like a separate game, nearly. Sharing the... Okay, you're dead. Did I grab all the armor? I probably did. Sorry, I probably didn't explain that. When I've got four sentry uh, bots minigunning me, I'm probably not explaining things very well. But a good way to look at Time Splitters 2 even a little bit time split as one, is think of the game sort of being split into two halves, story mode and arcade, and um, like every level that you see in story mode, it, it, it's specific to story mode, and all like the logic and the AI as well. I could use some armor. Or health. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to make it out of here, because there's a sentry bot coming up. Help me! Actually, let's not do this the stupid way. Pretty sure there's a sentry bot waiting for me up here. But um, I will say, and this isn't to kind of promote my own work or anything, or videos, because I think it's all quite amateur. Even playing the game like this, with different sort of bots and things like that, it's quite fun sort of replaying the levels with these new settings. So I'd really want to find a way to share it with other people, because I think... Uh, yeah, there we go. I think other people get a real kick out of playing, um, you know, creeping up the stairs because you're worried the uh, sentry bot's going to minigun you to death. Is something you don't normally do. The maiden has, in the code, it definitely has a few. Um, there's definitely a few things which seems to be modifying it. Well, I actually tried changing. So before I've added any content, I've changed the maiden to a sewer zombie and it worked fine. Um, and the sewer zombie would like prance around being all maiden-like. Um, so for this, I actually changed it to be Gretel. And for some reason, it didn't like it. But in saying that, I could have literally misspelled one texture for Gretel when I was trying to compile the whole thing. Um... Which caused the whole game to crash, so... Um, you, you, if you want to see the sewer zombie do it, you probably can see that in a minute or two. He's still alive? Just thinking how um, normally defeating the boss, not the portal demon, but the boss is kind of easy. But considering there's all those sentry guns up there, sentry, I keep calling them sentry guns, sentry bots. All armed with miniguns, this actually makes the boss stupidly hard.
How do I want to do this? Let's just go for it. Still going? No, you're gone. So, one thing I will say as well. So, it's probably pretty apparent to most people who have played this game that um, lots of characters and weapons are all different. Most of the enemies are actually appearing in the same place, they're doing pretty much the same thing. You can change that if you want to, so you can change where they appear, you can change the behavior that they do. Um, it's just I didn't have time to I wanted to do a bit of a quick fun stream tonight and I didn't have time to change 99 uh, bots sort of behavior now I'm gonna die here but um you know god they're so tanky are you gonna give me any more? I've said sentry guns so many times that I, I should probably try adding one to this level just to see. Well, I think it's pretty much curtains. We can do the old uh, cheat for the finish. See, to me, this is a boss. Three of these with miniguns is a proper boss. Oh, there's, there's a lot of fun to be had mod in the game, that's for sure. I mean, I know what to expect. Now I'm having fun just sort of having a, a fresh look at the game. Hello. Goodbye. So, I'll probably wrap this up soon, because I only wanted to do a quick stream. So we're getting close to an hour. But before I go, because I said I would, uh, let's go back to the main menu. Uh, what do I need to do? Uh, I need to look up what numbers equal what characters again. To be fair, it's probably better to just restart the whole game. So let's do that. Okay, this is as it should be. So, I'm just going to quickly show you what I said I would. Oh, yeah. That's better.
There's some, I think Time Splitters 2, more so than even uh, the first game or the third game, got that feeling of just beheading zombies so spot on. There's just a real satisfying punch to it. This, this is where the game will crash and not do what I've said it's done. And if that's what it wants to do, then whatever. Oh, there you go. So I said you'd get to see it, so you can see it. Oh, you have given them the... How did you manage to do that for Arcade? Let's get some uh, panning camera angles for this. Yeah. Oh no, he's so distressed. <laughs> Pure art. Just think of when we uh, change it to the other characters. Oh no. <laughs> What have I done? I turned off no clip and now I have no clipped to God knows where. To be fair, just getting the um getting the sewer zombie to do that is a pretty straightforward thing. I literally swapped two digits around. Um, changing the actual bots to be say robots and things like that, that's when it's a headache. But it's all it's all fun, so There's no reason why you can't have the sewer zombie being the hunchback, or the hunchback being... The, actually, the hunchback being the maiden could be quite entertaining, just for a quick one. I know I'm supposed to go in a second, but... So, what would happen if you became... I think I've tried this, actually. Ah, oh, Reaper Splitters are in this level. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Let's quickly... I need to change bot number five. This may immediately crash the game, so. But let's. That's what we're here for. The monkey challenge. Actually, are these the monkey challenges for arcade? Because weirdly, um. So most of challenge mode actually runs as if it was playing story mode, because, you know, you do behead the undead. Um. And you've got like the zombies doing their AI and it actually loads a special version of compound from the story folder with some different story logic um, same for circus actually there's a circus specific um, story level um, but if I remember for the melon ones and when you're shooting the monkeys out of the air one of them did play as an arcade level well, I can't remember how or why 
but um, I'll, I'll look into how the um, story AI can work in arcade because it's not something I've, ex I've explored myself I, I should probably play this normally for a few seconds just to uh, trigger all the correct AI or speed through it So there's an unused uh, bot in... Uh, will it crash? No, it won't crash. There's an unused bot in this level, which is the Reaper Splitter. Actually, is the Reaper Splitter present in this level at all? Because I can't remember. Because I know some levels, depending on the difficulty, they will have a Reaper Splitter in them. Or not. Because I know Atom Smasher, if you play it on easy... I don't believe you get the Reaper Splitters, but on normal and hard you do, at the very end. Um, and actually, just for a bit of information, each character, each bot you see, like this one here, there is a special flag which determines if they appear in easy, normal, hard, two-player mode, uh, things like that. Same for items as well, so you could make all the uh, hard bots appear in easy mode and vice versa and everything. Um, let's just quickly quick save before we completely save save uh, trash the game Okay, so are you gonna do the animation? I don't know you're all keen that's good Ooh. But will the next one work? Or will it crash? Well, even though the Reaper Splitters don't actually appear in this level, they are they are in, so maybe they were originally going to be in it. Uh, it should act as an ally. Oh, shit. No, don't kill him. Oh, no. <laughs> I was reading this thing, the way the challenge was set up for zombies in Monkey Challenge when you get killed. Ah, interesting. So yeah, so something's obviously... Uh... That's a normal maiden, as far as the game's concerned. Now you're what? I have a weird feeling when this did the animation, it crashed. I don't know, it's... The terror of the universe is uh, right here. I get some dramatic angles of the uh, splitter as he's coming down. And there he goes. I wonder if Hunchback's still here. Nah, he's disappeared. It's just all too much for this time splitter.
Uh, the changeling. As far as I'm aware, it's in the pose of the maiden once it's on the chains. When you unlock it, it does a little animation and then it should default to an enemy or um, there's a trigger or some logic behind it. Because it's obviously not attacking you. Um, I can't actually kill you anymore. It should be a normal changeling. It should just be, yeah, it should default to a zombie as soon as it's done. Are they killing each other? Oh, I know what's happening. They're killing Hunchback. It's probably gone now, but... He's got... <laughs> he can't get away. Nah, oh, it's over. I've failed. He's got quite a lot of health, if I remember. Objectives failed. I don't agree with that. Can I change this failed objective, please? I can, but it would be a pain. Anyway, um, I hope we've ended on a bit of a funny note. Oh, actually, no, we'll, we'll end on this note. happens sort of interest if you <laughs> okay the clone hunchback will uh I think I've said I'm meant to go like a lot of times. So is Thingy Bob going to come out the door? He is. I wonder if he'll fight all the enemies though. Yeah, fair enough, he is. Oh, he's attacking the boss. Or maybe it's just like collateral damage. Kicking an ass, look at him go. But will he just run away when uh, when he's finished? Or will he actually take all these people out? Yeah, look, he's just, I think, no, he's not. They're just getting caught. As long as I've helped. Ah. I think they're pretty 
<laughs> and they're pretty suited for each other. Pretty sure once they get to around here, um, I think if you do follow them, they walk to the very nearly the start of a level, but then they'll they die. The game kills them off, probably to save a bit of RAM or something. That's something Future Perfect is pretty good at as well, killing killing things which aren't on screen to save um, save on memory. In fact, I did a, a bot stress test on Future Perfect. So for, for Time Splitters 2, I think when I did it, it was, um, I think you get 50 bots max. I can probably test that right now, actually, but, um, oh, they're, they're still shooting us. With Time Splitters Future Perfect, I think the max bots I could have was 10. Now, I know I was meant to go 10 minutes ago, but... Um, what happens if we do this? Ah. Okay, I thought that might be the case. Now, how many of you are there? I think there's a lot more than I uh, thought there was. I need to move you all away. This is an example of a bot stress test for Time Splitters 2. But yeah, this game's quite impressive. I think 50 is the cap. Um, Future Perfect was around 10. At least for story mode, including the player, probably, I guess it's 11. I think Time Splitters 1 is insane. You can have trillions of bots on that game. It's a little bit framey. <laughs> I don't know how much like PCSX. Well, here's the thing: like, it's not that the, the computer I have couldn't handle this. Um, so I'm assuming the emulator is sort of somewhat working within. Yeah, they're all spawned in one spot. Um, there's a so there's a bit of. Um, I hate saying code because it makes it sound like programming language, but there's a setup which determines how many lives an NPC has. So if it dies, can it respawn and how many can be present at one time? A good example is actually the hunchback fight with the zombies on this level, actually, because uh, every time you kill one, after a small timer, they respawn. So there's values which affect that and everything. But yeah, uh, back to actual hardware, I'm not too sure, because I'm not too sure how much PCSX2... Like, I'm not overclocking it or anything. So, like, you can see sort of here it's dropping a little bit. But one of the things I've said, I probably say this every time I go on a chat or I uh, do a live stream or something, is everything that I've done I want to be able to do on... Set them on fire. Uh, okay. I want to be able to do on, um, how do I set them on fire again? I want to be able to do it on real hardware. So I have burned copied discs and uh, tried that before. Not for AI, like spawning, but just to try little mods and things like that to see if they actually work. I believe I need to borrow the code from you to do that. I mean, there's nothing stopping me, um, like, editing one byte of the, um, like, the ISO, burning it. I could probably... What does the PS2 output? 
I mean, I'm actually considering getting a SCAR to HDMI box thing, just so I can stream. Yeah, that'd be a good idea to use a network adapter for that, actually. I, um, I don't have a chipped PlayStation 2 either, so if I want to use a burnt disc, I actually have to make the disc, patch it as a master disc, because the only PlayStation I've got which can play burned games is a, a dev one. But I do have the big dev kit, which I think you can just put anything in it. And as long as you put the right Linux commands in it, you can... Uh... It'd be quite fun to actually just have a video of one of the dev towers running a weird modified version of Time Splitters. Um, I think this should... I, I think there'll be a lot of lag when I try what I'm about to try, but... Oh dear. That's 50 in one spot. The so Dev PS2 towers are they're nearly, they're essentially the size of a desktop. And they're super fragile as well. You just you look at them and they start falling to bits. So I'm always a bit skeptical of using it. But it does allow VGA output on some games, which could be good for streaming it I guess now if we give this a script to do a um, I'll change the script so it tries to follow waypoints on patrol and it might start walking down the corridor there you go There should be 50 of them. I don't know how the patrol behavior actually works, because, I mean, they'll essentially just be going to, like, the nearest node or something that they can. Because all I've done here is I've, I've given them the, um, the Nikolai behavior from Siberia, which is to follow a set path, but I don't think they actually have a set path. So, maybe they're just slowly walking to me? I guess they are. I feel like it's lagging less with them on fire. Yeah, they're definitely sort of slowly homing in on me. With that many bots present, will any other bot in the game load? Like, if I go for the armor. No. Yeah, I don't think... So, but that, does that mean that the the uh, portal demon can't even load? Because there's too many bots. What happens if you go in here? There's nothing to happen. Crispin's not used in any... Um, story level I remember when I was like a lot younger I always wondered why when you put him in map maker he was never on fire so they load okay ah oh, now you've loaded so there's probably a bit of priority set for these guys It might have even deloaded some of them. Yeah, because now all these guys are here. I guess that's just part of like the scripting for his... Uh... Can I set you on fire? Oh, sugar. Oh, well. Tell you who you can set on fire, actually. This guy. Come here. Oh, his head turns 360. Oh, he's on fire and he's running off.
let's quickly... Oh, I need to go in the rain. Let's extinguish ourselves. No, there you go. So the, the rain in this level will actually... Uh, Is his health actually going down because of that or not? I think it is. Uh, excuse me, what were you doing? Nah, he's bad. Or if it is going down, it's. I think he's being hit by the sewer zombie thing. Like if you, if I stand here. No, oh, we finally died. We could just speed the whole thing up. See, is he though? I can't tell if he's been hit by someone else. Yeah, uh, I guess maybe. What happened? Oh, hello. Let's have two bosses at once. You still going? Yeah, he's still going. Messed it up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. But on that note, I did say I was going to have to nip off before, and I'm going to have to nip off now. So <laughs> I was sort of looking to do a quick 40 minute stream and just show a bit of the work I'd done on Notre Dame. Mostly for the robots. And we ended up messing around. I'm not sure when I'll stream again. Um, I really, really should, like... I need to get a lot better, to be honest, at, like, streaming regularly. And to be honest, actually, I really need to uh, get better at doing more regular videos, but I don't really want to keep... I don't want to pump videos out for the sake of it. But I'd like to do it a bit sooner as well, get into a bit more streaming. As long as I've got something good to show, then um, yeah, I'll get into it, because it is good fun. But for now, thank you for watching, and yeah, I'll see you next time.